Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a North West based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy and bulky items, collections and drop offs. Fast, safe and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to the Billy Moore podcast and today's special guest is Lee Brown. Lee? Yes, Bill. Thanks yes, for coming out. Lee, nice so me. the reason I've asked you to come on because I know you as we were kids growing up and you've had like a troubled background and things weren't going right for you, but you, you're on here to talk about your journey and um, what you're doing with your, your life today. So tell us a little bit about yourself growing up. <laughs> Hectic, as you know, Bill. <laughs> uh, coming from that chatty estate, lad. Just chaotic. Um, land of the robbers, man. Um, people just trying to make money. Seeing other people with money. Just wanting everything. Loads of, loads of temptation. Loads of temptation, do you know what I mean? Um, not really much else in the legal side going for any kid down there at the, at the time there was nothing do you know mm-hmm. what I mean apart from a few youth clubs which is even worse than being on the street sometimes do you know what I mean and um, yeah just living with me ma and my brothers so any, I knew you as a I knew your ma I know your ma hello Mary hope she's well you know and um, Marie yeah she's sad so I uh, I remember what it was like for us growing up on that estate so we lived on Chatty which is uh, the south end just off up of Parliament Street it was a pebbles ass, remember? It was all pebbles ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. You were all kids. Yeah, that was a long time ago now. So what was it um, What was it like for you, like, in the household growing up as well? Like, you know, being with your mum, just a single parent. She had three boys, didn't she? Yeah, three lunatics. I was the, um, I was the black sheep in the house, definitely. Um, what was it like for me growing up? I was the wild one. I was the one that couldn't be tamed, as you know, Bill. Uh, two brothers, all we've done is fight, especially me and my older brother. Yeah. Well, that was that was basically... And then the older lads were all our mates who were, like, doing other, their own thing and that, and we just wanted to be involved because there was no other route for us to go to, do you know what I mean? And then, um, then basically... But me ma, me being the guy I was, that's why I was in children's homes and all that, you know what I mean? So, because I was so much as... a of a rebel kind of thing, do you know what I mean? Do you think um, your ma struggles to cope? Yeah, definitely. Like, the, we had no dad. Our dad was a scumbag and still is a scumbag today. And, um Thomas? Yeah, he, he's just chilled now. Don't you speak to him no more? Yeah, um, brotherly love, man. You know what I mean? Brotherly love. But, um but me, personally, it was all me. It was no one else. It was, it was all me. Um, nobody else so like I, I always said like if I done something it was because I wanted to do something or I done it not because somebody else done it or somebody else said do it I've always like accepted my responsibility for my actions you know what I mean and um, that's why I've ended up living the mad life I've lived you know what I mean which obviously I'm not proud of being 35 now with three kids but it's life it's, a, it's, it's the only way you're going to learn yeah, no, so we know we all go on them destructive paths, mate. I mean, for me, I was what twelve years older than you, you know, and I led down, I went down that path of like here, yeah, the clash age, and you know, you know what my journey's been like, yeah. you know, it was a fucking nightmare, uh, especially like living in that area as well, you know, and and the plot all over you. So you're on that destructive path, you know, sensations all over you. You haven't got what you want. And I was the same. And you see everyone driving around, and this is what it's about. You see people driving around in these truck whips, you know, flashing loads of uh, money around like it's it's going out of fashion, and you want it. You know what I mean? So, but you didn't go down that route of going on a class A's like me. No. Did you see like the likes of me and other people looking used and looking? Well, t- well, t- to be honest, it was <clears throat> it was more of a money infuriated for me. I 
I just wanted loads of money when I was a kid. I thought I was going to be a <clears throat> multi-millionaire by the time I was 10, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was like, that's why I was just, I've always said I was a robber. I was I was never a thief, you know what I mean? Like, we all, all my generation, we were all like robbers, not thieves, you know what I mean? Like, we could be invited to anyone's house and, and no one's mum's watch it go missing, no one's Mars purse that gets hurt because we were yeah. robbers, you know what I mean? We went out, we robbed motorbikes, we robbed yeah. pedal bikes, you know, starting from young, Pleasure Island, like all them days, do you know it, what I mean? It's good that you can separate that, like the thief and the robber. Oh yeah, definitely, because you, 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 you wouldn't have a thief in your house, you know what I mean? You, you'd be at the front door because you'd be scared of your, your, your little brother's toys got robbed or your bike got robbed yeah. or your, your nan's fucking purse or something, you know what I mean? And to me, that, that doesn't display like a proper like scouser, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, and yeah, we were just out, man, robbing just literally anything that that was takeable, we took, and if yeah. it was sellable, we sold. It was just simple as that, you know what I mean? And if there was ten of us on the on, on it, we'd all split equal wage, you know what I mean? No matter who picked it over the wall, whoever pushed it out the garden. It was equal ways. We were all there. Do you know what I mean? Everyone gets nicked for the same thing when when you get nicked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it, but yeah, growing up was crazy, man. So, what was the graft that you started getting like arrested for? Well, to be honest, every main thing touch wood come come like as a as like a, a blessing where I end up say I got nicked for a, a robbery or or whatever it was. I'd just be why I'd get nicked is because I'd get nicked for fucking a burglary or something at the same time and then they'd arrest me for something else you know what I mean and then it'd only be like the minor things that I was basically going getting nicked for and the other things had, had like kind of sorted themselves out and insufficient evidence or whatever do you know what I mean so um, <clears throat> so I end up most of the things I've been like convicted on haven't been the, the big things I've been arrested for do you know what I mean yeah. which is obviously a good thing for me but um, but the minor things are like burglary, fucking robbing jewelers, and you know high valued thefts from jewelers, and just stuff, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Cars, fucking, I've been banned for sixteen years, Bill. You know what I mean? I've just got a license sixteen years after after being banned, and um, six dangerous drivings. It, you know, I, I just had this thing I could never pull over. You know what I mean? I could be in the most legit car ever. But I just didn't have it in me to pull over, do you know what I mean? Even when they were just giving producers out, I couldn't pull over, do you know what I mean? Just in my head, so I just said, don't pull over. Just take chase. Just take chase, and that was it. I was fucking, I was ragging my ass, these getting chased by 20 fucking police cars. Next thing, I've had two bad crashes as well, so. And the, the first crash was like two, six times when I, I fucking went through a wall in a, in a, in some, um, vector getting chased by police and in my mind I was like oh, I can't get nicked today next thing I wake up in hospital I think I'll fucking hell I've been nicked do you know what I mean so like things like that but silly things do you know what I mean where like obviously now I'm older and I'm thinking fucking hell if I took a pull there all of them were legit cars they were never stolen cars or no shit like that do you know what I mean but it's like it's it, that fear though isn't it yeah it's that fear yeah. of just getting nicked fucking of what might be you know what I mean Cause when they take people like us to court, lad, yeah. the the judge don't they, they don't want to know. You see, plot behind you, like they're like sharks, aren't they? As yeah. soon as these are surface, you like you, you get all. <laughs> even when you're now, even today, right? Yeah. And I'm driving, I'm legit. Yeah. I see a plot behind me, you think, fucking hell. I start yeah. driving, it. I start feeling a little bit different. Yeah. You know, so it never goes away. No. Same. You know, well, same happened to me the day I got pulled in my van. And I'm like, oh my god, big Matrix fan. I could see there was about ten of them in it. I thought, oh, fuck me. Pulls over, they ties it, and we were all shit. You start casting so weird. If hey, your van stinks so weird, and <clears throat> I'm like, just get your swab out, officer, because I know my van doesn't stink a weed. But just get your swab out anyway, because you obviously want to swab me. So yeah. just swab me, because I don't smoke weed. And then uh, next thing he's like, you've got no insurance. I'm like, mate, I've got insurance, lad. I couldn't fucking work my phone or not. <laughs> they just started chatting shit. Like, next thing I'm on the phone to her, she's fucking t texting me all things, but it's the wrong thing. She keeps missing the thing in a, in a WhatsApp to send me and sending me the wrong thing. It's took like half an hour gone by. Next thing they're like, look, we're taking your van. I'm saying, you're not taking me van, lad. It's insured. I ain't paying insurance. To use dingbats to pull up and sell me, and I'm not insured, and then try and give me six points knowing that 
you reading out all me all me me um, me driving offences, but I'm showing you the fucking driving license. So that is irrelevant, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the same will uh, give something to your phone. I'm like, I don't need to give you me me code to me phone. It's why it's my son's phone anyway. They're like, well, we might arrest you for fucking a stolen phone. So I'm like, well, if you pulled me for a stolen phone, or if you pulled me for no insurance, <laughs> or if you pulled me for weed, which is it? And then they were like, we're taking the van. I'm just like, ah, oh. so I'm on the phone to her saying, you better hurry up and send these fucking things over and I'll find them. She said, next thing she doesn't find them. So then he ends up taking me van. I end up getting me, me bike out. I'm just thinking, my head's gone now because I'm thinking, cheeky bastards, my van's in short. So two minutes into me little ride, she texts me, does all the right stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it turns around, rides back to them. They sim picked them park this and uh, I ride back to them, Bill, and I goes, officer, and he goes, well, I said, gives me van keys back. He goes, what for? I said, because I've got me fucking all my right documents here. So he's looked at it and he's gone, it looks right. And then the other one's gone, well, we've already seized it and the, the things on the, I said, none of that. <laughs> Get fucking seized it. Here's the proof here. I'm not paying 170 pounds, I'm not Because you just want to fucking act a cunt, you know what I mean? They took the van. Long story short, I'm riding home. They want me to pull me again, saying you haven't got no lights on your bike. <laughs> <laughs> I just jumped off it that quick, just started pushing it. Said fuck you, mate, and just pushed it out of the park. I was thinking, ah, oh. and then I had to go and buy, fucking buy my own van back, kind of thing, the next day. Just little things like that. That's just why I can't stand the cunts. You know what I mean? Do you think you've been like, like over the years, you've been like persecuted because of your past? Pre-cons and that. Yeah, a million percent. So okay. there's no, there's no, like, because, like, now you've changed your life around, <coughs> like, a hundred and fucking eighty degrees, haven't you? You know, yeah. you're doing a lot of positive things, but, you know, obviously before that, and it's, it's, it's the way, just the way of life, really. You know, when you, you're in that, um, in that world, you know, you're half fucking on the radar, you're going to get pulled. But when you're doing the right thing, you can't win for losing. No. You know, so you've you've had like you were telling me before about your, your problems with the weed, and you know you haven't smoked weed for you know you can sell as yourself. You know, yeah. so what happened there? You started, you know, you were on the the cannabis for a long time, and I, like oh, it's great because the audience here yeah, love all this because yeah. some of them, you know, actually, you know, I've got a problem with drugs and and, and weed and what have you, and it's it's inspiring that you can see people that have been there and come off it. Yeah. Yeah, that weed's no good for no one. Yeah. I know. I've smoked weed <clears throat> most of my life. The weed now is not the weed then. Whatever the fuck they're putting in that weed now, <clears throat> it ain't the same as what natural organic weed was yeah. like when I was a kid, you know what I mean? The Rocky. Any weed, skunk, whatever it was, skunk, bush, Rocky, I didn't even know about pollen till I was older, do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and um, to be honest, it was all, it was clean. Now, I, I stopped smoking weed the, about 18 months ago and I swear to God, 10 days I stayed in that house. PlayStation all day, did not leave the house, didn't even go to put nothing in the bin. Aired and the kids, she was just taking them to school, whatever. And I swear, it was like I was doing a rattle on the couch, lad. Fucking, I fall a kip, I wake up and the whole couch would be soaking wet like someone poured water over me, do you know what I mean? And that was just from everything just coming out of me and I swear I'm sitting there some days on the PlayStation with big belly cramps and that and I've had loads of food you know what I mean just just couldn't even concentrate as soon as 10 days went by I felt like very energetic weren't like didn't feel like I'd lost weight or nothing like that or or any like like natural like you know strength or nothing it yeah. just, I just felt as soon as all that drained out of me it was like the energy just came back, you know what I mean? Two weeks before that, I couldn't, I tried to jump over the fence and nearly died, you know, out of breath and that. As soon as that 10 days went by, Bill, fucking hell, I was off on them fences like a kangaroo, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was thinking, fuck, that's the weed, that, you know what I mean? And like, oh, honest to God, I was literally, for 10 days, so, not even sick, just like ill for 10 days. And it was, and it was just literally while the weed just drained out of my system. And then, it was like, I've never sweated so much in my life. And the reason I didn't go to bed during that 10 days is because I knew I had me, like my girl and the baby in bed. And I knew that that bed would be like a swimming pool 
by the time they woke up in the morning if mm. I stayed at bed so it was just couch I was just living in the living room like I was on some fucking 10 day fucking corona thing do you know what I mean and um, and honest to god I've never I never felt any better in my life I still smoked ciggies and then after it because I felt like if I didn't smoke a ciggy I didn't need, I didn't needed to smoke a fucking so you'd res- you think you know that's the second best you'd re- you didn't want to resort back to smoking weed yeah so what do you think like you know, so obviously this is um, a, a question that people want to know about like you, you know your mental well-being do you think it's it's affecting a lot of other people you know this weed today a million percent one your mates and have you seen it yeah yeah like everyone deteriorates off the weed like if you don't there's something else up with you you know what i mean like you know they can't be weed you're smoking because this weed that people are smoking now is such of a high grade grade mm. like one joint now is probably putting me and you a kip, you know what yeah. I mean? Because the weed's that strong these days, and that tells me <clears throat> that it's not just weed in the weed, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's and, gonna be something else. And there's, <clears throat> even on all like your crops and all that, there's fucking the packages that the shit comes in, what they grow up with, it says on the fucking back of it, clear as day, not for human consumption. So, and no one knows exactly, like, word for word, or what, exactly what's in them, those things, because I'm not a scientist, do you know what I mean? Mm. But that weed is... And how much was you smoking a day? Well, I said, if I had to put it in joints, I probably, on a on a bad day, you're talking like 40, 50 joints. A easy. day? I was smoking nine spliffs, waking up seven in the, six in the morning, five in the morning, training. I was doing pure training on the weed. And uh, elite training, do you know what I mean? But um, I said I'd wake up at fucking half five, six o'clock something. I'd go down, my first coffee... I wouldn't have even finished it, Bill. Honestly, serious note, I would have probably been on my fucking third spliff before before me fucking f- me coffee was finished. Yeah. By nine o'clock, I'd had three, four coffees, seven to eight, nine joints, and I wasn't even stoned. That's like the point of where I was at. Like I wasn't stoned. It took me till about four o'clock in the fucking afternoon to even feel stoned. Do you know what I mean? I know, I know exactly. Because once your tolerance goes so high through the through the roof for this weed, and I had it in abundance at the time. D- d- there's no level you can get to where you, you feel yeah I'm alright now do you know what I mean where you just continue smoking the joints and just like it's like your fucking hand and your mouth are just glued to each other well like cigarettes like, aren't you that's exactly I, I, yeah. I used to go to bed mate and I used to make up a like about a ten before I went to sleep and then I'd yeah. wake up I would just smoke them yeah and I like the same mate I never got it it was just it was just I was just getting through the day that was it you know there was no there was no feeling but I knew when I didn't have it I was anxious you know, I was frustrated. You know, I was a bit angry and a bit intolerant. Yeah, with definitely. This, you know, so abundance. How was that? How did that come about? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <coughs> tell you what, that weed. Uh, I'd never smoke a joint again in my life, Bill. That's how confident I am. That yeah. I'd never have weed again in my life. But in abundance, like I said, I was a robber man. I was out, active. You know. Ours is smelling everywhere, Bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> Crops. But, yeah. But, um, obviously, I can only, like, talk for me. I can't, like, mention anyone else, do you know what I mean? Because I couldn't incriminate anyone. But, obviously, them, them crap houses, man, they're fucking, they're everywhere. Right? And if you smell one, you better take it, because someone else will. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that, was, that was the life I was living at the time. Like, if it's there... I'm going to, I'll go and get it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've always found myself in a situation where I know that I'm only one side of the law, you know what I mean? Like, I could never be two sides, that's it. I've, I've chose my side, I've fucking done my time in jail. Yeah. But I'm out, I've got three kids. Yeah, obviously I don't want to go back ever, but I know what side I'm on, you know what I mean? And um, so for me, if, if, if there's something there for me, then in my opinion, it's, I can get it, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm entitled to. It's a jungle out there, isn't it? So it's a doggy dog world. Yeah. You know, they, it's not like mother care. You're not going to turn up and someone's going to, uh, yeah. you know, call the police because you've, you've yeah. robbed their crop. Yeah. You know, I've seen that happen all, you know, yeah. all my life, you know. You know, it's, it's, it's well, you know what, though? Some of these bastards do phone the fucking police when you <laughs> rob the crop, honest to God, Bill. Honest to God, there's some fucking bastards out there who'd fucking, they'd know you were in the crop and they'd phone plot, yeah. you know what I mean? Rather than having the balls to come and fucking face you in their own crop, they'd rather phone plot and get you nicked. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm fucking and and then lo- lose two birds in one stone kind of thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, but for me, it's like if you got a, if there's a crop there, it's fair play, me fair yeah. game. Like if I've got a crop, if I don't have crops, but if I was to have a crop, I know that some of the fucking you got to protect that, haven't yeah, you? Exactly, yeah. and and no one would give a fuck if they were robbing my crop if it was my crop. So why in hell am I gonna give a fuck if it's yeah. yours? I can't rob people's crops and they've come back two days later saying, You robbed me crop, I'm like right. Well I didn't know it was your crop at the time. So now I still don't give a fuck that it's your crop, do you know what I mean? Because it's my crop, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and that was it. So all, all my weed I was smoking was for free at one yeah. point, you know what I mean? But um but yeah. But yeah, that them don't I'm done on it. All, yeah. all that like crime and all that for me now. No, it's, it's it's not a, it's 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 his English lifestyle, isn't it? Because like I look, we're going back, right? We're from the South Town, which is the Sockstiff area, and you know, back back in the day when I was growing up, there was you know kids out there that we you know. I'm not mentioning any names, but we're like shell tape and irons to people's feet and everything. To you know, <laughs> we're just fucking robbing them that way, just going out yeah. and robbing grafters, big time. Definitely. Look, Frenchy was a big one on that way, ain't he? Yeah. You know, he, he even he's got a, t- a big mouth though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I only know him through olders and being older. You never me. met him, no. Met him a few times, yeah. Um, obviously got nothing against him. You know what I mean? Fucking do. I had made it with him with with yeah. his family once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, me personally, those people aren't aren't, aren't of any interest to me because because yeah. of the way they are. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not that way inclined. Yeah. And like I said before, <clears throat> I am from the East streets, and and I'll always say I'm. St- I'm still here. Do you know what I mean? I'm not multi millionaired off my head. I'm yeah. not fucking pretending to be a big bad boy gangster or nothing like that. Do you know what I mean? What I am is someone who doesn't like fucking anyone with authority. You know what I mean? And to me, displays like he's authority. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, that's it. So let's talk about this. Uh, see, like the consequences as well, which is important, right? Because we can talk about that lifestyle where you know we're smoking, we're smoking green, and and, and we're grafting, and and it's coming on top, and then we're getting nicked all the time. So the consequences for you when you're going to jail, what what was it like? You know, taking away from your family and <coughs> you know your mum and your and your nan, yeah. you know, and everyone else. Yeah, definitely. My nan was a big part of my life. Wow, she me. was boss. Your yeah. nan, right? She's Mary, a legend. <laughs> legend. I a I love your man. Yeah, I couldn't name, um, and, and and she's missed. You know, she sadly passed away. Yeah, uh, rest in peace, Mary. Yeah, but your nan was like she had you all on lockdown as well. Yeah, as she, kids, she was the glue of the family, man. She was, yeah. She's, out. she's the only reason everyone came round. Yeah. Fucking, most people don't come no more. Do you know what I mean? Now that my nan's gone, and obviously. But that was the main house in the family, you know what I mean? And yeah. she was definitely the glue. Obviously, we were all bastards with me now. We were bastards with everyone. But, like, me now not this way with everyone, do you know what I mean? You know, you, you know her. She fucking... <laughs> she, <laughs> she'd tell you, she fucking swear. Like, she bounced a pan off your head if you were fucking stepping out of line, you know what I mean? But, yeah. uh, but me now deaf. You could, could annoy me now all fucking week and she'd date you. But you know what? If Claude come to the door, fucking anyone, she'd have your back in an heartbeat like that. She'd, she'd, she'd lie through the teeth for you, do you know what I mean? And then the fucking police raided the house and <laughs> nicked me pure, pure blood, I swear. I couldn't even say what I'd done the night before, but I'd done crazy shit to get home and get away from them the night before. And then fucking get home about seven in the morning. I thought, I can't be asked going to my, I'll go to my nan's because I had the key. Falls a kip on the bed. I fucking swear, Bill. I fell in swamps and everything. I swear, I was soaking wet. I was so tired. I was stoned. I fucking had cuts all over me from bushes and thorns and that slices on my face, you know, just desperately trying to get away from them. Then the, the next morning, goes a kip, runs the bath in my hands. Thought, yeah, I'll get a bath now. And then I went, oh, I'll die if I get in that bath because of all the sores and the cuts on me. So I've lied down on the bed. I've put this plastic sheet on the thing. I've lied on the bed just to relax me back as I date myself. And I must have just conked out. Next thing I fucking, I've, I've woke up to about 30 police around the bed. I'm thinking, oh, no, they got me. <laughs> it was something totally different anyway. So long story short, he brings me downstairs. So I start realizing I've got like fucking three and a half grand in the cupboard there and two and a half grand in this box. And I'm giving me Nandis eye. 
and she goes grabs her waist as it's there for it and he got it yeah. <laughs> and I just burst out laughing and the busy said what are you laughing for I said only a few new officer yeah. and just kind of, in my head I'm just thinking oh my nan's a fucking scouser you know yeah. and she had the fucking nearly six grand all stuffed down her knickers and she's fucking easy you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> and then I did obviously never found her or not, you know what I mean but my nan's gone now yeah she lived a long race yeah, didn't she yeah 84 yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah she was a legend lad but yeah, fucking me, we're, we're going away and that with the, with the family and that. I was always independent, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I'm gone. Fucking nothing else out there right now matters. There, everyone's sound, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm fucking, I'm here. That's all that matters. Now, what, what can I do to better my life in here, do you know what I mean? I.e. fucking, I'm still robbing in here, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and I've always said I don't follow the rules and regulations of society. So I've always told every school I've ever met, so I'm not going to follow them while I'm here, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I believe they're worse. Screws. Worse, yeah. Yeah. Than, than plod. Plod only put you there, them bastards keep you there, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I like that one. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I fucking hate them, man. Yeah. I've never, but there's been points in my time, in my life where I've always said, I'd love to come and see you yeah. when I left here. I never have. Yeah. I think it's a different it's a different ball game when you get out, isn't it? Yeah, once you're out, it, you, it's, you forget. You yeah, move it's on. not that you forget. It's the it's the fact that you're so good at adapting. You yeah, know, like I could fucking be away for two years and come out, and it's like I've been out for two years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like instantaneously, just like I mean, I can just switch up. Do you know what I mean? I'm back on. Let's go, JD. Boom. Yeah. Once I've changed, just adapt them back to yeah. you know the lifestyle. <laughs> you know, the yourself, once yeah. you get that fair shower and wash that fucking jail fucking stench off you yeah, you're back in re- reality yeah. then do you know what I mean once you get your, your colour back in you you, know I mean? you come out like grey you know what I mean fucking getting hit from all that sun but but yeah fucking I fucking hate jail bro you know what I mean I've always said I, I, I hate jail I've done a lot of it you know what I mean obviously I never want to go back but I'm in a position where I, in my mindset I could go back any day, yeah. like, and it would. It obviously it'd be a problem, but it wouldn't be. It wouldn't affect me. Like it would affect other people. Do you know what I mean? Because I've done fucking nearly ten years in the yeah. block. Yeah, but you're, and you're a big kid as well, aren't you? How tall are you? Six foot. Six five. Six foot five, right? Solid. So you know, have you been subjected to, to a lot of violence, like growing up and? In yeah. the prison system. Oh yeah, fucking not that fucking not that prison system. Things I've done in that jail. So from when I was a kid, people trying to bully me, fucking. Just Cause you were small, was as a kid. No, I was, I was tallish, but I, I was, I've, I've always want, I always said to myself, yeah, you shot want, to, want to be like fucking John Claude Van Damme when I was a kid. I always yeah. wanted to be some big sick kickboxer. Do you know what I mean? So I've always been good with me kicks and that. So like, obviously, when you landed in them fucking jails, like your Castlingtons in yeah. Northumberland and that, with a gang of fucking mad crazy Geordies who can have it and these smoggies and machams met some boss kids up there but fucking some of most of them are lunatics they just want to fight all the time yeah. you know what I mean? and being a scouser obviously I'm not the type of scouser who can like I can't bow down to anything me so yeah just a like little thing like I had a I had a chunk of Rocky back in the day Rocky in jail when I was a kid I'm fucking 15 16 yeah. What about if I had to go back and in, in memory and think what it was? It was the size of about us, maybe three quarters of a us a Rocky. That's a lot for yeah. a 15, 16 year old to have, do you know what I mean? Especially in jail. Yeah, in jail, do you know what I mean? So then I've got this kid, I won't ever mention his name. He's come he's come to me door, he's gone uh, something scouse and I don't know what they called um Rocky or, or a joint, but he said something in, in a diff but like meaning bring me fucking some spliff out or whatever yeah. after at Soch I'm like I haven't got none he's like I, I just give some kid two joints for two pouches of tennis tobacco stuff yeah. that he sold there yeah and he goes um, you've just blah 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 and I'm like look just keep it down and he goes if you don't blah 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 so I'm like so I'm thinking this cunt's a big cunt yeah. so he's fucking so he's I've gone I'll come out I'll give you something just don't tell no one so I've acted like a shit bag behind me door yeah. so then I thought he's getting it in Bill you know what I mean I'm no playing games in this fucking jail I'd been on about a fucking eight wings already for the same type of shit you know what I mean so anyway I fucking I thought yeah looked at me pillar thought that pillar case is coming with me wrapped it 
balls there, walked out on social, first on social, put fucking five pool balls in my pillowcase, swiveled it so it was dead tight, put it back that, like down my waist and I, I've hit behind this fucking sign. So this cunt's not gonna wake up today. <laughs> and fucking just seen his little fucking Lacoste trainees coming down the stairs at the gap of the stairs. Just walked behind them, boy, I sailed them into the next light year, lad, <laughs> honest to God. I ended up fucking in the block for about eight months for it. They couldn't prove, you know, they, they, they proved it. And then said, ah, oh, because the kids, I said, they fucking whack me with something, do you know what I mean? And then, um, anyway, lad, they, from then, when they put me back on the wing in that Castington, it was just war. Because they all hated me in there. I was the scouser who had the fucking chunk of Rocky. Yeah. I didn't even smoke weed, you know what I mean, at the time. It was just when you break a little joint off, you get a fucking backy or shower gels or food, whatever. And it was the start of me, um, of me, me like hustling in jail kind of thing, do you know what I mean? It's like the first thing I ever had in fucking jail when I was a 15 or something. It was like, it was like fucking getting a bar of gold, to be honest, you know what I mean? But yeah, but that Castington, just full of rife kids who just want to fight and fight it all, even snooker tables. And I'm on first and all that, Bill, you know how it goes. Yeah, the YPs are fucking yeah, nightmares, are you know, when, I, when I jumped up into them cons, and like even just like mix cons and and yos and that, like the the levels of, of like respect and <clears throat> the personas and the meanings the of attitude people, attitude of, yeah. is is just totally changed m- miles away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like YP is only like a million miles an hour. Uh, Life just goes dead fast in there. Yeah, fucking. You know, then it's just dead relaxed in the in yeah. the cons. It's a bit more easier. In the cons, it's like there could be thirty people on the fucking table centers waiting for a goal. And someone says, I'm on next. And there's someone else says, I'm on next. And they go, oh, you on next, yeah? Oh, yes, yeah. Sam, bro, I'll go after you. In that fucking YPs, it's like, what? I'm on fucking next. <laughs> next thing, they're pulling five of the mates down, saying, he said he's on before me. <laughs> and then you're like, fucking hell. You don't have a goal for yeah, me. And then in your mind, you think, oh, was I on next? I'm sure I was on next. It's last second next, guessing. Yeah, next thing, you're fucking having 10 fights because you were on next, do you know what I mean? These fucking greedy bastards just want to jump the queue, you know what I mean? And just little immature, juvenile, delinquent shit like that is like, obviously it makes you, it can't, it, it couldn't break me because I was too mentally strong for that shit, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was down with whatever they were down with, you know what I mean? The yeah. whole nine yards, we hit me with a bat, I was hitting him with two bats, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or at least trying to, do you know what I mean? Pull the balls over your head, I think, all that. So you've always been game, haven't you? Yeah. But that set you off on a journey of like, See where we're coming to now. We've gone through this, and this is we've gone through this arc of like, um, you know, drugs, violence, prisons, growing up in a, you know, in a difficult like fucking like <coughs> environments. So you've had a, you've had a tough right. Now you've got a family. You've got a couple of kids. You know, you, you had a you had a ride with the weed, so you've stopped taking that. You know, you you know you don't drink no more. You don't take drugs no more. You've gone legit with everything you can think of. You your license. You, you know, you're not banned, yeah. right? You lad, like this, I was really proud of it. I'm going to say that, you know, you, you won your first BKB. Yeah. Being a couple boxing fights in, um, where was it, Newcastle? Newcastle, yeah. Brilliant, right? Rooting for you, seeing the, the guy you were up against, the foot. I seen you the week before and you were telling me and you were smoking birthdays outside. I fucking hell, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's just kidding, but you were drinking water. Yeah, yeah. You, you were all out. out you, the, all, all the lads were out, and you were out there. Yeah. And you were just drinking water, yeah, yeah. which was which was positive on on the day. It was a positive thing. But so, what started you off on that career of like playing local boxing? Uh, well, clearly it had to be me, me, me mate who I've been mates with for years. Uh, Chris Fishgold. Yeah, uh, he was in the UFC, and that he's uh, he was a former world champion. Um, Shout out to Chris. Yeah, man, he's good stuff. Um, fishy lad, and uh, I, I went and co- cornered him in in Wembley with 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 another lad, and uh, and then we sat down with the matchmaker basically and the, the kind of the English promoter for their show. Yeah, and and he put me forward. He said he'd be good at this, you know, and and we shook hands and he said I'll get you on the Newcastle show. And I said I'm the guy, I, I, guy I am. You can't tell me <laughs> that you're gonna get me or something because I know. I'm so persistent. You're obsessive, compulsive, yeah. and you're driven. <laughs> so once he said, I was like, you're already in training. I said, do my fight tonight if you've got 
any um, pull out you know what I mean yeah. and he was like look <clears throat> I like your confidence I will get you on I had to give me I had eight or seven different fucking opponents up until this fight and I was thinking nah I'm not gonna end up fighting here yeah and then he goes look I've got you a, a decent opponent he's got a boss record he's got a better record than basically anybody on the show so I'm like um, let's go man I said anyone will do do you know what I mean and then and yeah that I, I wiped the floor with him. But Listen, how many fights did this kid did he had? What, 17? Uh, se- I was his 17th bare knuckle fight. He yeah. won 13, uh, 11, I believe, by knockout or something. And he'd lost three. And this was your first? This was my first, yeah. Mad, that, isn't it? Mad, it was Did good. you have any fear about no. going in? Did you think, fucking hell, I've got I, a little bit of a... Uh, <clears throat> no, I... Just, I, just I, confident I, that you were going to take yeah, him out? I know, I'm, I'm confident, me, but I, I, I know I've got high levels of skill in fighting. I, I know I have. You know and when I mean? did you finish him about round? Um, like early in the second. Yeah. You know I mean? But I dropped him like five times, you know what I mean? But I, 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 me personally, I know I would have got a clean one shot knockout, but he wasn't, once he hit him with the first the first shot, I dropped him. It was like he wasn't looking to properly engage yeah. to open them arms up so I could set a level on him. So he was just covering. Yeah, so basically I was dropping him through his covers, do you know what I yeah. mean? And then and then the referee just weren't having it, do you know what I mean? Fucking just called it off. But but it was a good win for me. Brilliant, um, brilliant win. And I feel like I performed proper good. I feel like my next fight though, they're gonna they're gonna try and step up a level of opponents. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. And um and basically hopefully well yeah, the same same's gonna happen. Right? On your, you get on your game. So is this something like you is this a career path now that you wanna see? Definitely. Yeah. Like I, I'm excited to fight again. Like I, I said I'll, I'll fight on the London one, which is in February, and he said he'll he'll obviously bear an open mind for that. But yeah. the Liverpool one's short time after this, so which he was right in saying like uh, he'd rather save me for the Liverpool one because a bigger crowd for you. That too, but in case of if an injury occurs, it mightn't be enough time to heal. So yeah. broken knuckle, a broken hand, or whatever, any bad injuries on the face or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? So, so I was like sand. So I'll do both if if they're available. And you're know on the you're on the same show as our mate Danny Christie. Yeah, Danny, man, big shout was... out, Danny. Over lots of love there. Danny's doing really well. That's his yeah. what was that a second? Yeah, that was a second fight, wasn't it? I'm Third. not sure. I think it was yeah, two or three fights. Yeah, yeah. and he's <clears> fucking <throat> put them to bed. Every time, yeah, he's, he's a good fighter. Cool, man. calculated, I met him, and sure. Yeah, I spoke yeah. to him, took a picture, and that with him. He, he's good stuff, Dan, man. Danny is Danny's a good kid, so he's gonna go far in the BKB. Yeah, I think will. you go far in the BKB, mates. I think you've got the talents. I think this is something that you know, lost dreams awakening because for years, you know, you've got something within you where you know, you, it's all fucking out. You, 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 all that, right? It's like Michelle Flat as well, and shed, and, and it's all good and done when you. You end up in these prisons and your liberties taken away from you, yeah. and you're just fucking vegging on the couch, and you know you, you're talking and driving and you're hiding and you're looking over your shoulder and you're getting pulled on your bike and pulled yeah. in your van, and, and it's fucking horrible ways of life. And you've got you've got a couple of lovely kids, and you know you've got a great partner, you know. So it's it's it is. See, and and I, like I say, this this podcast about real people with real stories, right? You've got a great story, you know. It's one of a like adversity, and, and and it's about you like you come a full circle and you're changing it. You're at that age now. You, you're only still young, thirty five. You know, five. and you know you want to try and do something positive with your future. So, how many years do you think you've got in this game? Do you think? Because what's what's the um, what's the plan? Where do you think you're gonna be in the next five years? Well, I thought about this the other day because I was speaking to that. Um, to Anthony Holmes, the one who won the title, and that, yeah. and, and uh, obviously a lot of respect to him. He's won pure titles in this band. I call these game as a badger. You can yeah. tell, you know what I mean. I've seen a couple of his fights as well before that. You know what I mean. So obviously I knew who he was. Uh, I just never met him. I took a picture and that with him, and then I was chatting to him for a little half an hour outside the uh, our hotel where we were staying, and that. And uh, and he was saying how many titles he'd, he'd won and that, and, and I was like, fair play, lad, you're a machine, you know what yeah. I mean? And he's saying, uh, like, I think he won the cruiserweight, and he's saying he, he's going down in weight. So, yeah, and I, I said, but I said to him, I said, boy, I'm looking to drop the cruiserweight, me, lad. I wouldn't want to be facing you because that'd be a, <laughs> some tear up that, you know what I mean? And he, he messaged me, on, well, I messaged on uh, Instagram saying, well done and that, you know what I mean? Some m- amazing achievements. Cause he so, you're that. a heavyweight, aren't you? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, heavyweight, yeah, so, but uh, I'm a fast heavyweight, like, yeah. I'm 16 stone, 
I was 17 stone like 14 weeks ago do you know what I mean yeah. so I was meant to be fighting a cruiserweight 90 key so I was 95 key nine nine weeks ago because I come down wait to go to there and then I was trying to sustain 90 key for t- towards me last three weeks four weeks yeah. but then he said go back up to 100 key but I was already more or less going to 90 key so then I was like ah but lucky that he caught me seven eight weeks out so I could I could like legally go back up you know like yeah. without um without losing it. yeah yeah and, and like feeling unhealthy or putting pure grease in you and that do you know what I mean so then when I got to 100 key he said I might need you at 95 key I'm like get up <laughs> I can't go back down to 95 key now do you know what I mean because like, what 10 pounds three weeks out do you yeah. know what I mean and I'm like and he was like got back to me he's like 98 key I said yeah I can do 98 key not a problem I said after the gym session in the sauna yeah. I'm 97 points something do you know what I mean so then that's where I was going 98 key and that do you know what I mean but then it landed back at 100 key because the kid was 5 key overweight so uh, this Billy uh, Billy Hawthorne who mm. we faced he was hundred and something key or something so I said yeah I'll do the hundred key do you know what I mean but naturally I'd like to go lighter because I reckon I'd be faster yeah and definitely I, like a middleweight I yeah, reckon and, and, and like, I'm usually shredded with a proper six pack but I didn't feel I had a proper six pack this time because I was at 95 key then I had to go and like obviously you were up and down yeah up and down so <laughs> loads of water there that's what it is like yeah. so then so then I was like ah fuck it we'll, go, we'll get to the 95 key or yeah. the 93 key next time see where where that goes you know what I mean yeah. but I, I was saying to that Anthony Anthony Holmes the one who won the title and he said I believe you could win a title in this and I believe I can win a title yeah. in that because is it, I, is it big money when you get to a point where you win winning titles like that you know what though to me, it doesn't even matter if it's big money. It's brilliant. It, 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 I've had, as you know, I've had mega money in my life, lad. I couldn't even give a fuck about it now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It, it, it's more of, I want an achievement, not yeah. fucking. The money can come at the end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thirty-five now. I fucking, I've, I've had, oh, I mate, I've had to say it. I've had millions in my life. Do you know what I mean? And mm. I, I'm not saying I've even got a DVD to play it in the house to show for it. Do you no. know what I mean? So. <laughs> So I'm, Comes not, and goes. Yeah, that, so I'm not <laughs> even asked about money, do you know what I mean? And um, it's more, I need an achievement in my life, you know what I mean? Like I said, I got off the weed. I fucking, I got off the weed. I haven't had a drink or, or a line of coke fucking for years, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, fucking years though, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, well, I said, I'm going to get my license. I got my license. I was banned for 16 years, do you know what I mean? Um, no, I, in a row I was banned for 16 years but I didn't get a 16 year ban it was yeah. just more six different driving offences all kept coming in like a year before my ban had finished and then again another fucking ban in jail whatever so then uh, and I just said I need a licence I need to f- do this do that obviously I've been nicked with a few things and, and the way I'm thinking ah oh, this is a load of shit this now but then once I got my licence I was like you know what fuck it we're having a professional fight this year. Yeah. I said to Miguel, and I said, she's like, nah. I said, I said, look, <laughs> I said, look we're having a fucking professional fight this year. I'll get you bags packed. We're going to Newcastle, kid. And then obviously, I, I just, I went into a training camp. I was there fucking, I was in an 18 week training camp. Who's your, who's your coach in the training camp? Well, basically, it's Fishy. You know what I mean? Fishy's the guy, he's the guy that's got me. He's like Fishy, yeah. He's the guy that's, that's opened the doors to me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. I got bare love for the guy. Uh, I, I love him, lad. He's, he's the funniest. He's, he's genuine, you know what I mean? He's got a good heart, and I've known him for nearly 15 years. Yeah, I followed him the other day. And, um, and basically, I'm always in the gym with him. Or, or, or well, I'm always in the gym anyway. Yeah. I don't really need to be there with Fishy. I, I go there on my own because I know yeah. everybody in there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We've all been in the same gym for years in Dean Garnett's gym. So it's a good atmosphere it's, it's probably the best gym that in the they aspire. city that aspire yeah, yeah. it's the best gym in the city if you walk in any other gym they're a gang of snarling bastards mm. they are you go in here I've wanna, interviewed Teen he's people want to help you man it's, yeah. it's like they're there for you. You, know, you ask a question they'll answer it you know what I mean without any sm- smart remarks you know? like the good people in there do you know mm. what I mean 
it's load, lo- loads of um, boys, girl, unisex in the gym. It's uh, boys, girls, kids, getting on with each other. Yeah. Everybody helping each other. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. our kids love the gym. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a good gym. And um, but as for me going there, it's basically obviously Fishy's the guy who's who's got me in this bare knuckle. Do you know what I mean? He's fighting again in in MMA now, but. I'm gonna take on this this bear the whole you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, do you think it's it's like it's it's helps you with the um, like your mental health and you know your physical health and and, and the way yeah. you're thinking better? Best drug in the world is gym. Yeah. The only drug in the world that you need is gym. Like definitely. Like I was unfit to fuck twenty twenty weeks ago. Yeah. Like maybe twenty five weeks ago, I was unfit. I fucking I busted my collarbone about twenty months ago. On, on the pads with fishy finished me couldn't it was like someone stabbed me in the chest on a one two left hook on the pads but we just missed the left hook but we were like 10 rounds in and i was goose on my workout before it and me me arm my shoulder just crushed together bill i was it was so painful that's when i end, i ended up back on the weed again yeah and then a few months after being on the weed I thought, fuck this weed. I'm fucking no more weed for me. And then I had another baby, yeah. me, me daughter. I will see you now. Yeah, she's one now. Wow. Fucking flying everywhere, <laughs> screaming dad everywhere. But yeah, lad. And then um, so two <coughs> two sons who were built like barbarians. And then me, oh, okay. me, me angel. Wow. Yeah, I swear. So, but yeah, lad. Now Congratulations as well. Nice one, Bill. Yeah. But three kids now. Like I've always said, cause my dad was a fucking bum scruffy bastard can't stand him ate the bones of him Bill that's yeah. me honest opinion and I've always said what that cunt never got us or done for us my kids have had a million of and to continue and to you know what like, so I had the same like as it's true my own dad I've got like, a little boy now and I, and I always shared I've never seasoned the way my dad seasoned me because yeah. you know there was no nurturing there was no love there was no way he was, you know, there's loads of rejection and abandonment. So yeah. that, right, and I believe that's contributed right to who you were, who Definitely. you became, right? If you had a, like, I don't know, maybe not, but like, <coughs> if you were surrounded because your mum was great, you know, yeah. I knew your ma really well, you know, um, and I knew she'd done the best she could, and and your nan and everyone else. But if you had that like father figure, that hero in your life, yeah. right? For me as well, you know, I was surrounded by that love and understanding and. You know, had positive opportunities. Then maybe I'd have been down a different path. But for me, it was just I was just yeah. a fuck, I was a nightmare, um, and that's that's the contributing factor that led to who I became. You know, and then as you grew older, like yourself, I've learned to, to to make choices myself and understand and reflect and go, okay, I need to change. I don't want to live that life. I don't want to be looking at, over my shoulder all the time. I don't want to be sitting in fucking cells uh, all my life. You know, because one day we're all going to be dead and that's it you know so really loved what you've had to say Lee right and I always say this at the end of a podcast right Um, what would you say right to a young a bit of pearl of wisdom here what would you say to a young Lee Brown right coming through (coughs) the doors of life if you've seen you now because I know what you I'm I'm picturing you now in in my head like fucking bombing up and down chassis like with your (laughs) Thomas right just fucking throwing bricks at everyone right (laughs) what would you say to a young Lee Brown like coming through the doors of life now, if you had the chance. What I'd say to a young me, wow, fucking hell. What I wouldn't say to a young me right yeah. now, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. There wouldn't be a book long enough to write on me, lad, but um, what I'd say to me, fucking hell, I would like, if I, if I was, if I was a father figure yeah. in my life when I was a kid, I'd have been like, this kid has got proper talent, like fighting talent. I used to love fighting. As you know, Bill, yeah, I was fucking, I could have been any, a, a, I could have been world class at like kickboxing yeah. or something. Do you know what I mean? So if my dad went such a bum when I was a kid, and grabbed me and just dragged me into them fucking gyms or into Alfie's fucking community yeah. or wherever it be, fucking even if it was table tennis or basketball or whatever, even for anything, like I reckon I would have been far better off than what not as in like rich or not like Mm. i mean just better off in life you know what i mean and um to say something to me when i was a kid i'd say fucking little bastard stay in the house 
don't fucking go out at three in the morning robbing back of police stations for motorbikes. Fucking stay away from all them or keep them all away from you because you're the fucking worst one in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'd be, it'd be hard to say just one thing to someone like me when they yeah. were a kid because smacking someone like me when we were kids was all you could do because we were that much of rebels mm. and we, we'd we listen or we'd hear it but we wouldn't we wouldn't be, I couldn't spell till I was fucking 15 you mm. know what I mean I couldn't read me fucking five year old now is reading books lad reading books lad and he's five mm. and I'm looking at him like I can't <laughs> even help you with your own work <laughs> and me 11 year old's own work's fucking tough lad and yeah. I'm like what I didn't even do me sats lad you know what I mean yeah. this fucking 11 year old's bringing homework back and doing all asking me all crazy shit lad and I'm, <laughs> but I, I literally couldn't spell my second name until I was 15 14 mm -hmm. end of 14 15 me little lad can spell his name my name the baby's name he fucking he, like honest to god the he's, he's, he's had some do you know what I mean and education like, there I, we were daft like we were smart street smart yeah. we were smart in loads of different aspects of life but when it comes to fucking homework yeah. and maths and English and academically and, yeah, yeah like academically <laughs> we were brain dead do you know what I mean like we really was you know what I mean we couldn't fucking even read the street signs out to see which way we were going on do you know what I mean yeah. it was just more like a sat nav in the head we went this way you know what I mean but honest to God, but uh, but yeah, me fucking me kids are understanding all different languages and all that. You know what I mean, Bill? Brilliant. And like, where I'm like fucking, and I struggle to fucking understand English. Mm. And and this five year old is telling me all bad shit that I don't even know. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I like that do his own way. <laughs> but yeah, but it's tough for me to go to jail to yeah. get a proper education. Like I'm a boss drawer. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't know I could be a boss drawer until I went to jail. Do you know what I mean? And and I picked a pencil up in an art class. And then she said, draw a portrait to yourself. This one I was like 13 or 14 or some shit like that. And, and, I, and I thought, a portrait to myself without a mirror. And I swear, I draw one. And you know, when I looked at it, it weren't me. But as a 14 year old, it was me. It was nearly, it was not far off. And even she was like, I remember, forget it, lad. She was like, that's really good, you know what I mean? But even that, where like, I was so insecure, but I was like, Fuck me, man! That is really good, you know what yeah. I mean. And it was all in color. It was all. It was all. It was proper. And I was like, "Fuck me! That looks like me." That you know. But yeah. I drew it, and, and, I, and I couldn't figure out how the fuck I drew it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But I sat there for fucking two hours drawing it. And then, and then when I, when I went back to my little room and that little dorm thing was something was in a in secure, you know. I was. I kept thinking about this picture. I was thinking. Wow, I've just drawn that picture that proper looked like me and that, you know what I mean? And then the next day I was back in the art class them fucking drawing all cartoons and shit, you know what I mean? Brilliant. And the cartoons were like the exact picture of the cartoons and that. And I was like, oh, fuck me, I can't spell, but I can draw, you know? <laughs> but so they, that was my little talent, you know what I mean? That's drawing right. and that. So yeah, but my education and that defo come from jail, Bill. I didn't yeah. get it on the streets. My only education I got on them streets was fucking, was... How to rob and how to make money. Yeah, yeah, that was it. But when it comes to like being smart and intellectual it was all from sitting in them fucking boring ass classrooms yeah. in them fucking boring ass jails with a gang of fucking criminals that you've just met today do you know what I mean I'm probably gonna fight tomorrow do you yeah. know what I mean so yeah but uh, it was a good learning curve been all around the country um, every jail you can imagine in England and um, you don't want to go back definitely don't want to yeah. go back but there's screws out there who in, in prison systems I swore on the holy bible that I was going to come and get them yeah. for the things they done when I was in jail and just like the stitch ups and, and visits and just pad searches and do you know like loads of bitter resentment yeah like getting twisted up after fighting some dickhead from like wherever he was from nothing to do with a prison officer <clears throat> Fair play, they have to step in, but you're getting twisted up, and they're giving it all that stop resisting. Your fucking arms touching your ears. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And 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 you're like, this cunt's really got it in for me. Do you know what I mean? And like just little things like that. Like the, I used to have this little thing. I used to say, I'd come, I'd come down, like say wherever it was, just it could be any screw, just one that I didn't like. Obviously. There's some you meet that, that you think fucking hell, I'd buy him a fucking yeah. pint, you know what yeah. I mean? 
But if they're the ones I hated, and I really hated some of them, bro, <laughs> I'd fucking, I'd, I'd, I'd like make a show of them, like in, in like an open environment. Yeah. yeah. So like, if I felt like they disrespected me, I just so, just out of the ordinary. Say for instance, this couple of times, but one, this one time it comes down, there's this bitch, man. She's, she's come outside my door. She's chatting fucking. Um, stinks of weed on the swing, Mr. Brown. I'm like, I'm going to fucking have a word with everyone else then if it stinks on the wing because my pad's only one part of the wing, do you know what I mean? So next thing, um, I comes out with myself, I goes, fucking hell, car park outside here, innit? And then when I've gone in, in, in the, the, the survey, she she was on the bar in front of the governor, though. You know, the ones that you don't want them to go out in yeah. front of, like, fucking say in front of the fucking SO or whatever, but, and the governor's there, you know, that you could be going block in the morning and shit. <clears throat> oh, here he is now, the parcel man and that. So I'm like, I said, um, on a scale of one to ten, how good at your job are you? She goes, who, me? Oh, I'm a 19, me. I said, out of ten. She went, yeah, I'm a 19. I said, well, that's good, because I need a fucking shit. Go and get me a bug roll, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, the old fucking gaff was in. Even the, st- um, the governor was killed over laughing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, just sort of random off the top of the head. I said, because I need a shit and I need a bug roll. So go and get me a bug roll, because that's what you're meant to do. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, she fucking brought a bug roll to me, pad me, me, pad me, just in stitches. I thought, yeah, but she hated me, do you know what I mean? And, uh, and her husband. But yeah, one of them, when you do something like that to one of them, and the husband's like part of the eighteen, the little twist up thing. Is that in Lee? No, this is in fucking Risley, this yeah. one. But uh, I've I think got, they were, I think they were there. Mannix, was it? I don't even know. Oh, I, I don't even know. I don't even want to you know. say the bastard's name in case fucking yeah. she got dicked by a fucking buster, man. Yeah. Really blame me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, but loads of things like that. Do you know what I mean? Like there's been there's been loads of situations like that where I've terrorized fucking his wife or or her husband or and the other one's been part of the twist up around the next thing the fucking HM Power Rangers are coming in my pad yeah. and fucking twisting you know if I'm running anger off fucking screws heads grabbing me fucking me weed and me <laughs> just fucking doing all crazy shit lad next thing I'm in the block for weeks but but like I said I've been been all over this prison system but I fucking I put fucking that more screws on the back than I could imagine that, you know mm. what I mean? That fucking one prison that I ate, always ate it. Oh, oh, I've been there like three times, I don't know how, but they've, they've accepted me again twice. It's that fucking Walton lad. Yeah. I ate it in there, bro. Oh, mate. Screws in there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 honest, I, I couldn't, I, I'm trying to change that phone, but I could not tell you what, what had happened if I bumped into someone from there. I don't know, because the situations that have happened in there, yeah. it brings back so much mm-hmm. anger. And I'm a loose cannon. I'm like, I'm that guy who can't write, can't uh, count to ten. I don't anger, um, anger management. Yeah. And and I had a, I had a psychologist, this doctor Mina, assigned to me when I was younger, and she used to do this drawing of a bomb, and then do like a fuse coming off it with all colours, and like um. The, obviously it'd be like from white to red explosion do you know what I mean like a count to ten type of thing but lad I never ever got to ten do you know what I mean mm. I fucking me fucking bomb would explode, explode before that and, and that, that feel that's what I'd be like if I, if I bumped in that's the only only gaff that I feel that could you got, still got resentments with I hate yeah. them in there like yeah. they just they just wrong them they yeah. just bad you know what I mean I'd well, let's let's you know let's Hope oh, that you don't go back there. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. I, I believe I could never go back there, even yeah. if I was to ever go back to the main. Obviously, I'm trying to fucking reside out here, not yeah. in there. Yeah, that's, that's the it, main mate. Goal, yeah. Is staying up, staying away from all mad. Well, like you said, you got up. You could like to book on what you'd want to sell yourself growing up. Yeah, that's a bad. Eh? You know what I mean? I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to tear a few pages out though before yeah. the book and publish it. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, that Walton's not good for anyone. No, 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 no HMP in this jail is any good for anyone. Does it? Um, and that's the model of the story, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you know, that's it. The best, the best thing I could be doing now is staying out. Yeah, and any means necessary. 
at IE, staying away from any fucking like any crime, any any yeah, the negative, it's still yeah, the negative people, any negativity, yeah. yeah, of course. But you can't. At me for, for me, I don't really say anybody's negative. You know what I mean? Because I used to be negative. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know That's yourself. A good way of putting it, yeah. When when, when you're out and, and you're the team, or or you're with your friends, or whatever you want to call them, um you should be able to make your own decision yeah. you know what I mean someone says there's fucking 10 motorbikes in that garden there for instance mm. Um, there's 9 of us 10 including you that's on you you yeah. know what I mean if you want to jump over with the other 9 and push the other one out then they're not asked whether you do or you don't you just have to say yeah or no yeah. you know what I mean and they'll jump over themselves you know what I mean one of them will try and push two you don't have to be the 10th who pushes one himself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just little things like that. Like, whether it be anything in life, any crime, any 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 activity in, in general, do you know what I mean? Like, you Form make, your own opinions, make your yeah, own decisions. Yeah. yeah, no one's putting guns to anyone's No head. peer pressure, telling yeah. you what you need to do. Yeah. You don't feel like, you know. No. I've, I've always said, I've always stated it, if I ever do anything, or ever done anything, or ever said anything, it was because I told myself, yeah. That I'll do it. You know, and you mean? said that at the beginning, didn't you? Like yeah. you take responsibility and you're accountable for your actions. You, you know, no one else is making you do anything because they yeah. can. So that's that's a good point, really, because like most of these young lads that I know, you know, that I work with, they like they've got loads of peer pressure, and it's all about being skint and because they haven't got yeah. what everyone else has got. They want to do all that like uh, county line stuff, and then they're running. You know, it's all that grooming because yeah. you know. They're fucking running around for pennies, really, aren't they? You know, yeah. but where did he end up? They're always ending up in jail, well, whoever is shitting off. Yeah. You know. Well, but with anybody who does that, Bill, excuse me, they, um, they know that Tom, Dick and Harry are making all the money. You're making Tom, Dick and Harry all the money. So from the off, before you even start in that, in your role, you already know that Tom, Dick and Harry are making all the money. You're just making peanuts. Before mm. you even even come from your estate to start going county lines, so it's in your best interest to have a pair of balls yourself mm. and say, you know what, it's not for me. What the fuck is Tom Dick and Harry gonna do about that? Yeah. Nothing. They're just gonna go on to the next one. They're not gonna, like you, like I said, put a fucking gun to you and say you need to travel. Well, bully it, bully it yeah, is doing it. Do you think there's more, a lot of? Do you think there's a lot of people that say that to be in? pushed into doing it when yeah. they're not really no yeah of course million percent yeah. million percent like no one makes you do nothing all you have to say from the start there's, there's an offer there's an offer there and there's a choice and you can make that decision yeah. there's money if you want it then it's down to you if you want the temptation of it all and then you can make that decision so plainly you know this is where we're, we're at we're, we're trying to make people see like there's, there's two different paths if you take that you're going to end up down there but yeah. if you go to the gym get in the ring Maybe do a little bit of football, whatever. What's your whatever's your cup of tea? Then your life might not be fucking jails, institutions, and fucking dead. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, when you get all these kids who are saying, "Oh, I've been fucking groomed and fucking these have made me go up here," like I said, you've had the chance on your estate to say no. But now that you've had your cooking collar felt, you're quite happy to fucking let Tom Dick and Harry yeah. go. And take even worse of a blame than what you're, you're <laughs> taking do you know what I mean when you know Tom Dick and Harry from your estate when all they've done is fucking take you from by your mars so you're not fucking bringing shit to your mars house take you there give you a little fucking dropsy which you only deserve <laughs> yeah. and, and and now you want to fucking sink a big fucking uh, uh, big yeah, shit you know what I mean yeah. I don't believe in these kids man all this they're, they're making me this they're making me that look like you, you accepted it on yeah. the estate you knew what time it was you knew what you were going to get paid before you got paid you always had to say was no yeah, fair comment you know what I mean yeah. and uh, me personally if I was that kid I'd have, I'd have well said no do you think, do you think some do you think there's a difference between you and some others do you think you've got more like yeah you'd be you, more assertive in the way you you like you respond to others and go hang on mate I'm not having that see you later or do you think these are little, do you think there's, I don't think so to be fair I'm not I don't know I'm not judging but I well, probably am um, if you if you're a little bit more insecure, a little less vulnerable or more vulnerable than the others, do you think you want to go? Oh, I don't mind. Or you're a people pleaser, or you just want to be. Fucking... I get you. I I I do. I I I sincerely get exactly what you mean. Yeah. 
But because well, I'm looking at different things, you see. But like, when you take all that away, the yeah. people pleasers and the uh, the vulnerables and and the uh, the the like timid, yeah. yeah for instance, <laughs> you you just evaporate that now, yeah, and then boil it right down to the source. It's this. It's criminal. It's yeah. simple. It's it. Like if you whatever you do illegal, it's criminal. Yeah. It's either you are criminal. Or you're not, because yeah. there's no part time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, you're like part time yeah. criminals are the type of fucking people who, I'm a people pleaser, yeah. I'm vulnerable, I'm a victim, they made me. That's yeah. that that that's them, in my opinion. Fucking extreme criminals, people who are, who, who are brought up on the estates, fucking with all the lads been out on the graft, jumping gardens, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, like I know, like, if I get nicked, I know. Like, I say nothing, especially if it incriminates somebody yeah. else. Do you know what I mean? It, it it's fine if I'm just only gonna incriminate myself. That's it. There's no grassing. But there's yeah. no snitching. Yeah. Like there's no that you can't sweet grassing still grassing. You can't tell on your mate because 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 you want a better sentence than him. Doesn't work like that. Yeah. There's I said at the start, I'm only one side. That's someone asked me a question about that the other week, the other week lately. Is it, maybe you can uh, clarify for me. What does sweet grassing define that? Let's put it this way. <clears throat> this is exactly what I believe. Well, I know fucking sweet grassing is. Yeah. It's basically the sack the same fucking thing. That like whatever you can dilute it how you want. But I always say sweet grassing is still grassing. So, for instance, fucking, you fucking, you're in jail. Yeah, and you tell someone. And and I've told someone something, and I said, look, don't tell, blah blah. Yeah. And they go and tell, blah blah. So the motive is you're telling him because you know he's going to tell him. Yeah. That's sweet grassing. Sweet grassing, even even if it's not. To, to the screw or yeah. to whatever, it doesn't matter. It's always someone else, but you're opening that mouth and, and yeah. you're sharing. It, it, yeah, it's like information. You, exactly, yeah. you, you're sweet glassing because now you've just told him, and he worst case him. scenario, yeah. he could go and tell them. Yeah, do you know what I mean? No one gives a fuck that you've told him. Yeah, it's the fact that he could go and go and tell them, and them is who you don't want to really know. You know yeah, what I mean? That's what and. That's sweet glassing, but sweet glassing still glassing because sweet glassing mm. telling him he goes and glasses to him. It's fucking the same fucking line. So there's a there's a um, there's a cold, isn't he? We yeah. all know that. Yeah, there's definitely and the a cold. fraternity. I mean, outside when you're living in a, a legit life, you know, people don't need to like get involved and all that. Oh, he's a glass, he's a sweet glass, or he's yeah. a snitch because it's it's a different fucking world. You know what I mean? Yeah, no exactly. one's going to prison. No one's got a cow accused. No, no one's here. Uh, no one's here uh, sitting in a shell with someone. It's about. There's two worlds. There's that, you know, the criminal world where you all know you shouldn't do what you're doing. And then there's this world where, you know, you all live legit and it, it, you can all blow each other up for fucking, <laughs> not, not turning up fucking yeah. early for work or yeah. coming in late. Look, I've always said, <laughs> if, if you're a fully legit person yeah. with no connections to the... To the criminal to, world. To the criminal world. I've yeah. always said, then it's your God-given right. Yeah. To go and phone the police on somebody yeah, because yeah. you haven't had that, you haven't got that protection or backup where you could phone fucking ten of your mates and say, "Lad, there's fucking three fucking mass cunts in the back garden here." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's your God-given right. You, you're a fully legit law-abiding citizen. That, mm. That's your right to phone police and, yeah. and 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 go to fucking court and 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 get people jail or whatever. Not saying that it's what you should do. That's your right because you're a legit yeah. person who's never done a crime in your life, yeah. and you all you believe in. I ain't got Jack the Ripper to phone <laughs> on the end of the line. You know what I mean? It's fucking it's nine nine nine. Yeah, yeah. But for me, nah, the fucking that ain't that ain't happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I always say anyone that. That does like who 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 are now if they're fucking miles away from me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and you can't you, you can't be a fucking a, a career criminal and, and 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 then justify fucking oh I'm getting fifteen years fucking yeah. oh I'm going away I got three fucking kids in the house kid I yeah. tell you right now I'm doing thirty years in jail right today because I ain't saying shit kid yeah. do you know what I'm saying I could swear that on me three kids right now Bill and 
I would never want to leave them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I know that I've been with my girl now 15 years, now, 13 plus years. I've always said it. I said, look, man, fuck my door went in today and they nicked me from 10 years ago and said, look, three kids there. I'd be like, yeah, she's got them, man. Don't worry about that. Mm. You know what I mean? It's sad today. Of course, no, yeah. one, wants to, no one wants to say it. But... Bro, my kids would be fucking... And it's a big shout out to the missus as well because it's yeah. been solid for that time, man. I met Serious. her. Yeah. met her a few times. She's lovely. Lad, she's, yeah. she's good stuff, man. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah, see, I don't know how the fuck she put up. <laughs> I fucking don't know <laughs> how you put up with you. I don't fucking know how you put up with yourself sometimes. People say, how the fuck have you coped with him? I said, well, you know what people say? Take him with a pinch of salt. And they're like, yeah. I said, well, she's got to shovel yeah. the salt with me. Lad. Honest to God. But you know what? I, I couldn't have had... Um, three kids to anyone else that that would have um, well, well done would, that would have uh, like you, we, no I couldn't have made them without her and she couldn't have made them without me do you know what I mean yeah. and it's like yin and yang man yeah. fucking yes and no it's like we, we collided yeah, together yeah two, two opposites of fucking honest to God, don't you? But, but my kids are funny man they're, yeah. they're, they're just fucking fighters I've seen them yeah they just want to fight Bill yeah. they got shot you know I'm separating them every weekend lad fucking the, the one minute they're laughing playing playstation the next minute they're hanging off each other's necks yeah. and that do you know what I mean then the baby's just sucking the dummy and floods yeah. them think oh, what have I got here it's just a loving loving family eh? yeah well with that Lee right Come right to the end, mate. And it's been a pleasure, nice you, honestly, God. And thanks for coming nice on. Right, nice take one, care. Mate.